Hi, in this particular video, we're being asked to solve the equation. Now, this is um, one of the examples within the playlist where we're looking at algebraic fractions. So in this particular one, it looks very complicated. It is going to take a little bit of solving, but hopefully you'll be able to work with me. Um, or please do have a look at solving this for yourself and then compare your solution. So the issue I've got originally or initially is that both of these denominators are different to each other. So I need to make them both the same. So if we look at the first fraction, in order to make the denominator the same, I'm going to multiply by x minus 2. And because I've multiplied the bottom by x minus 2, I've got to multiply the top by x minus 2. So what I end up with is 3 times x minus 2 divided by x plus 3 times x minus 2. Okay, hopefully that's all right for you. Let's look now at the second fraction, which is this one. Again, in order to make the denominator the same, I'm going to multiply by x plus 3. Because I've multiplied the denominator by x plus 3, I've got to multiply the numerator by x plus 3 as well. So what I'll end up with is going to be adding to 2 times x plus 3 divided by x plus 3 multiplied by x minus 2. Okay, so now the denominators are the same for both of those fractions. Now at the moment, it doesn't really matter what happens on the right-hand side. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave that as it is, and I'm just going to make this look a little bit easier to deal with, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these brackets at the top, and I'm going to add those terms together. So if I multiply this out, I'm going to get 3x minus 6, plus 2x plus 6, so hopefully 2 times x, and 2 times plus 3 plus 6, and 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times minus 2 is minus 6, and that's going to be divided by x plus 3 multiplied by x minus 2. Okay, and that again, as I mentioned, I'm going to leave this as minus 10 over x plus 7. Okay, again, let's just tidy it up a tiny little bit more. I'm just going to pull the like terms together. So I've got 3x plus 2x, well, that's going to be 5x. And minus 6 plus 6 is going to be 0. So actually, those two cancel themselves out. And I just get left with 5x over x plus 3 times x minus 2. And that equals minus 10 over x plus 7. Okay, so this is where really you need to, um, I guess, have this technique, which is where we cross multiply. So what we're actually saying is, is that I can multiply through by that. So minus 10 times x plus 3, x minus 2, and also x plus 7 times 5x. Okay, now if you're not familiar with that technique, it is worthwhile just seeing how that works. And unfortunately, it's beyond the scope of this particular video, but uh, do have a look on the playlist with other examples, and that will give you some reasons as to why we can do this. Okay, so I'm now going to multiply this through. So I'm going to get 5x times x plus 7. And that's going to equal to minus 10 times x plus 3 multiplied by x minus 2. OK, now I know that this is going to be going on for a little bit, but hopefully you can see that it's going to start to take shape fairly soon. OK, and what we're going to end up with is probably going to be a quadratic equation and uh, we should be able to solve it. I'm hoping. OK, so 5x times x is going to be 5x squared. 5x times plus 7 is plus 35x, OK? Equals minus 10, I'm going to leave. And I've got x times x is x squared. Minus 2x plus 3x is plus x. And then plus 3 times minus 2 is minus 6, OK? All right, so let's now deal with getting rid of these brackets on the right-hand side. I'm going to leave the left as it is. So 5x squared plus 35x equals minus 10x squared, minus 10x. And then don't forget, a minus 10 times a minus 6 is going to be a plus 60. 
Okay, so now what we need to do is make everything equal to zero because we're going to get to the point where we should be able to factorise this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got 5x squared, which is a positive term, and I've got minus 10x squared. Well, if I add 10x squared to both sides, it means I lose this minus. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to add 10x squared to both sides, and that's going to give me 15x squared plus 35x, and that's going to equal minus 10x plus 60. Okay, so that's the first thing I've done. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look and say, well, actually, I don't want this minus 10x here. I'm going to get it over to the right hand, uh, left hand side by adding 10x. Okay, so now I'm going to add 10x, and that's going to give me 15x squared plus 45x, okay, and that equals to positive 60, okay. Now I'm going to minus 60, okay. So I'm doing this in a bit of a step-by-step -step way, but hopefully you can see you're going to end up with 15x squared plus 45x minus 60 equals zero, okay. So you've got a couple of options here. Probably the best option is actually to divide through by 15. Hopefully you can see that 15x squared is divisible by 15. This is divisible by 15 and this is divisible by 15. So you could, I guess, go off and have a look at using the quadratic formula or something like that. But to be honest with you, if you just divide through by 15, you're going to end up with x squared plus 3x minus four equals zero. And then hopefully you can see that you can factorize that, where I'm looking for two numbers that when I multiply them together make minus four, and when I add them together make plus three. Well, those two numbers are gonna be plus four and minus one, because if I multiply four and minus one, I get minus four. If I add four and minus one, I'm gonna get plus three. So I can rewrite that as x plus four, multiplied by x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so at long last, after all of that work, I've got my two values of x. I've got when x plus 4 equals 0, that means therefore that x equals minus 4. And when x plus, uh, sorry, beg your pardon, x minus 1 equals 0, it's going to mean that x equals positive 1. And that is the answer to this particular extremely complicated uh, formula or equation. So what we've done is we've worked through that, made sure these denominators are the same, same. And then I've used this device of cross multiplying. And again, as I mentioned, please do add a comment below if you're not sure about that. And I'll try to point you in the direction of other examples. OK, and then finally, I just had a little bit of faith. It was all going to work out for me. And eventually I was able to factorize it relatively easily. Okay, I hope that's all right for you. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. I'll always come back to you. Have a look at some of the other videos within this particular playlist, and I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.